Hey, thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show today. Has Paula convinced me to go to Vegas with her again? This, and I have a real issue with fake meat. All of this, plus your ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much. Shoplipandclip.com. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie? My husband comes first. He's my king. Paula? I'd be afraid someone would fly my mouth. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. This is episode 404. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know, but you're like, ha, ha, like you're an old person. I'm just having some throat <laughs> issues. I don't know what, it, maybe I am having a reaction to the donuts. <gasps> no. <laughs> Do you think that's what it could be? No, no, it's not. It's been hours. Well, not really. There's one sitting right next to me. <laughs> I know. Anyway, I'm just hoping you'll tell a long story so I can finish the jelly donut. Okay. Anyway, welcome to the ugly truth. Okay. So uh, really quick, maybe or not for the last couple of months, you've been harassing me because you have an obsession with Sebastian Manikowsko, the comedian, and you've been harassing me about uh, the fact that he's going to be in Vegas in October. Mm -hmm. And you've been basically doing everything but hooking on the street to find a way to get to the show. I have a way. I just don't have anyone to go with and I'm not going to go by myself. So are you so are you in fact going to Vegas now? I have convinced. Well, I actually it didn't take much convincing at all, to be honest. <laughs> I asked Stephanie if I paid mm-hmm. for her hotel and airfare mm-hmm. and ticket if she would go with me to Las Vegas yes. in October to see this comedian that I love. Right. And I'm not obsessed with him, but I you just. You are, but that's okay. He's, he's like my new favorite person, yeah. basically. He's your new shiny object. I get it. And she's just like, hell yes. That was her response. <sighs> and so I have mm-hmm. since now obtained a hotel room, two okay. airfare tickets. All I have to do now is buy show tickets. Is it on Fremont Street? The hotel? Yes. No, it's Where's... it's the one we it's the stratosphere. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not. No, Paula, I don't no, care no. where. I mean, they're all the same. No, it's just at the very end of the strip. It's it's like one of the like older hotels, but we stayed there last time. I mean, we're getting it for like thirty four dollars a night. So, <laughs> oh my god, are you staying for like the whole weekend, or what are you doing? Yeah, we fly in on Friday night and then we leave on Sunday evening. So, so I, am I allowed to attend if I so choose? I have an email drafted with all the details okay. and I even have the seat that you would have to select so you could sit next to us on the airplane. Is it Southwest? It's Frontier. Oh, Frontier's fine. It's not Spirit Airlines. Well, you did tell me you're like, well, if you want to come with us, you're going to have to sit on Spirit. I'm like, I um. said it might be. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I said just in the event. I thought to myself, just in the event, Jamie might want to go. I'll pick Frontier. It's a little Aww. more expensive, but I'll <laughs> but pick I'm it. I'm worth it. <laughs> because I know, I know once Jamie knows that Stephanie and I are going to go, <clears throat> she's going to be like, well, I, I want to go. Well, here's so. the thing. I don't necessarily. It's not that I don't. I mean, first of all, I love the idea of the three of us being in Vegas. And I'm not a snob about the hotel or anything like that. But I am a snob about the airfare. Frontier is acceptable. A, a spirit and Allegiant, I refuse. I'd rather fucking walk than get on those right. planes. The thing is, it's not, it's just, it's the timing. It, it's not really about going. I think we'd have a great time, actually. It's the fact that, and no one really gives a shit about my, you know, about this part of my life, but Daryl's traveling literally every week of the month of September through October. So when mm-hmm. he's done traveling, <coughs> the stuff that's scheduled now, I would literally be leaving the one weekend he will actually be home. And mm. so it's like, you know, it doesn't, I mean, we're all adults. It's no big deal. But the reality is, is that, you know, when he's gone that much, it feels really chaotic. Yeah. I mean, like he's leaving on the weekend to get to places because it's extensive travel. So it's like, do I really want to leave the second he's home and be gone for four days or what, three days or whatever? It's like, I mean, I guess it's fine, but unfortunately we're heavily married and you know it would feel it would feel kind of sucky to leave the second he actually has two days to you know to hang out no I get where you're coming from I really do but I think it's just 
the fact that if the three of us were in Vegas, I don't know when or if that would ever happen again. I agree. And so, I mean, I know you love Daryl and I know that he's been <laughs> traveling a ton yeah. and, you know, you don't get to see him that much, but you will see him again. You yeah, know? I know. Uh, listen, that th- I'm telling you why I was like, Ugh, I don't know. But it's not that I don't. It's not like I'm like, absolutely not. My husband comes first. He's my king. It's not that. It's just that I'm we're already you know, because we're plotting ahead and, you know, things are wonderful, but it's also, it's just a shit ton of away time. But, and we talked, I talked about it last night with him. We were laying there and I'm like, I really want to go. Um, but I don't want to like impinge on this plan they have now because I've changed my mind at the last second that, oh, maybe I do want to go. So what weekend is that? It's October what? Uh, so Friday, October 11th to Sunday, October 13th. All right. Well, send me the email. I will send you the email. I think we would, I would love it if you came. I would love it too. I think it'd be great. It has to be better than the last time we went, right? Oh God. <laughs> it definitely will. Well, and I'm sure Stephanie feels the same way because, you know, <laughs> the last time we went, she spent the whole day hungover. So yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, we didn't get to do much the last time you and I went to Vegas. Well, much. I think what we should do is come up with a plan this time. We, we should we should all think about something we want to do. Listen, if I'm being brutally honest, we did have plans. They all got thrown out the window, though. So I don't want that to happen again. That's all. I would love to be able to do at least something. Well, we're going to go to the show. That'll be super fun. So I think we should. I mean, I'm a nerd, but I would totally love to see that thunder from down under. <laughs> what is that? Is that a stripper it's, show? It's like the Chippendale guys. Like the magic mic, guys. Yeah, I know. You See, that's the difference between me and you. I do not get turned on by watching men gyrate. I don't get turned on by it, but I like to see hot guys. I just have never been that. That's never been my thing. But I mean, I'm not going to say no if you want to do it. Okay, so there's this scene and I've never seen the movie. Actually, I've only seen the scene. I think it's Magic Mike 2. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, I don't know what his name is. He's married to Sofia Vergara. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what his name is. Yeah. And so he walks into like this mini mart and he does like this whole like dance sequence and he's yes. trying to get the che- like the lady at the checkout stand to smile because she's just staring at him. She's got like a scowl on her face. Yeah. And he totally does like this crazy like dance where he like rubs a bottle of water on himself and then he squirts it all over the store and he rips up in a bag of Cheetos and then he's like rubbing his body all over the floor and everything right. like this. And so she like looks over and she's like watching him and she's like, what the fuck? You know, That's pretty much how I would respond. Eventually she starts smiling because then he's like, how much for the Cheetos in the water? I feel like, <laughs> well, just, you mean all the, the stuff that I have to mop up now and once you saunter out of here. And then so she starts smiling and then she starts laughing. And so and meanwhile, his friends are outside like, yeah, go, woo! you know, yeah, I don't I don't I mean that it just doesn't appeal to me. But um, yeah, I'm down. I would do it. I mean, I, I'll I will never say no. Unless it's something, you know, truly heinous. I think Stephanie would have a blast at something like that. <laughs> well, we'll find out, I guess, won't we? <laughs> so, well, I'll, I'll check it out. I think we all should look at something and okay. see if there's something we want to do. All right. I so will. I will send you an email. Don't be talking shit about me and my need for something nice, though. Like, don't be like, you You know Jamie's going to be a total snob about it. Don't do it. Don't be talking about shit. About what? I don't know, but the two of you will start going judgy on my ass immediately like, oh, well, you know, Jamie's never going to do that. Don't say that because you don't even know. The only thing I was concerned about was the hotel, but I was just like, well, it, it is what it is. So. I will tell you this, though. Stephanie has made it very clear she does not share beds, and I'm okay. I'm totally cool with getting my own room. Because well, three, it's too. Three, oh, you don't want to sleep in, in the same bed with me. Three grown ass women, one bathroom. Especially when you're talking about the, the the nightly rate is so low. You we might as well have adjoining rooms so we have you know plenty of room for activities. Okay, you know what I'm saying. I just especially if I'm if I'm coming in already and you've booked everything, I think it's only fair. So, are you going to get a room at the same hotel, or are we meeting you at your hotel? <laughs> I would get a room at the same hotel. <laughs> God. Okay. I'll suck it up. 
<laughs> it's not that bad. It's just old. They're so. all fine. The thing is, is they're all fine. I just don't want to, like, you know, pull the bedspread back and see a pube or a dirty sock or something. Like, no, I don't want to go that I mean, level. The other option was Circus Circus, and I'm like, well, that's not even an option, to be honest. So, <laughs> Do you get free uh, peanuts and uh, cotton candy with every room? Yeah, and probably, <laughs> like, you know, head lice and... <laughs> bed bugs Scabies. i don't know i don't know i don't know anything about any of those places but it's fine it's fine plus you know the hope is you're not spending a lot of time in the room that you're mostly out and about i mean it really it's supposed to be just a place to sleep and get ready so i will say that the encore looks fantastic <laughs> but well, i you could get a room there and we could just meet you no there. that's stupid why would i do that i would never do that <laughs> i'm not that person we'll see Paula, I would never leave you. It's like, you know what? You guys go ahead and go down to the ghetto and I'll be up here with all the normal people. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not doing that. It'll be fun. All the right. Stratosphere is fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, moving on. Uh, speaking of, I wonder if we go to Vegas to have food, if there will be any of this new fake meat that everyone's trying to shovel down our gullets. Is that the thing they're serving at, like, Burger King and stuff? So, Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and then a couple of the other, like, at the grocery store, I'll see where it's, like, called something not meat or something. So, it's basically, they appear like sausages or burgers, but they're actually soy-based. There's nothing meat. They're plant or soy-based products. They just use the same spices and stuff to make it taste like meat. Okay, so if they don't want to eat meat, then why do they shape it to look like meat? Exactly. Not to mention, so my biggest thing is the KFC. They have, it comes in a bucket, but instead of it red and white, it's green and white. And apparently it looks like fried chicken. I, I don't know. I've never seen it and nor will I ever taste it. It's got the same breading and all of that stuff. The thing is, so though. It's, e- it's equally as unhealthy for you on the outside. <laughs> it's actually worse because the these are manufactured products. These are full on preservative full product. They just happen to be like soy or whatever plant-based means, which is usually some kind of powder. So it's, it's like it, that's just the binder. <laughs> Yes. And I'm thinking, this is literally all the shit they tell you to stay away from when you're trying to be healthy. You know, when they Mm -hmm. say clean eating and stuff, they say, you know, vegetables, drink a lot of water. You know, if you're going to have meat, have it be lean like pork or chicken. Or, you know, if you're going to do red meat, have it be a very small amount. Nothing like this. It's basically like Oreos. That's all it is. It's all like synthetic, basically. It's all synthetic. Then you add the preservatives of a fast food or, you know, whatever fat they're using, which is probably like a coconut or something for the sausages or burgers. And to me, I'm thinking, why why is this an alternative for anything? And I've never understood people who are vegan or vegetarian who want, you know, fake cheese or, or fake bacon or whatever it is. It's like if whatever your reasoning for not eating meat products is... There is no way that your conscience should allow you to eat something that tastes like bacon, even though it's not bacon, right? Well, I mean, right. That's kind of my thinking is, is like, if I don't, I guess I'm under, I'm missing something. If you're opposed to the idea of, you know, dairy or meat or whatever, Mm -hmm. then why are you wanting to use products that are basically... It, it's it's like a simulation, you know? I, it's just strange to me where it's like, I refuse to eat anything that comes from a creature. I, we, we should be, you know, loving our animals and not eating our animals or whatever whatever it is. And so instead they're going to eat, you know, Oreos are, are vegan, which I did not know. Really? And yeah. And so I'm like, yeah. And the thing is, is I'm cool with whatever you want to do. I will tell you this, though. Back in the old days, if you de- boldly declared that you're not going to eat any meat... Back in the Little House on the Prairie days, you would die. You would die. People like that don't make it. You can't get, you don't get to decide that you're no longer going to eat animal products. You well, know? I mean, they just, you can't. It's a privileged rely. diet. <laughs> you're, you're, you're so privileged that you can eliminate food out of your diet because of your principles. Well, yeah, because I mean, at our fingertips, you know, we're able to get enough of the necessary nutrition to support a diet like that. But, but back then, you where you lived agriculturally, you may not be able to, you know, 
cultivate beans or, you know, whatever. You eat what's available. To me, it is a form of privilege that I have no respect for. And I don't want to hear it from anyone who is a vegan. Uh, Vegetarian, I can kind of get behind it. Because there were a lot of societies in which meat was just not readily available. So you just lived on legumes and greens and whatever. And it was fine, right? There are ways of getting around it. But but you still would use animal fat or other kind, kinds of pro- byproducts that came from your animals, milk, dairy, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, vegans don't do any of it. And most of it, it can't possibly be because of diet. No, I actually, I, I, I could see the value in a vegan diet because... Animal products, especially the way animals are, I don't want to say harvested, but the way animals are um, raised, I guess, or, mm-hmm. or brought up, you know, they they do have a lot of like steroid or hormone or, or right. you know, a lot of chemicals, I guess you can say. So, I mean, that does come out in dairy or in meat or, you know, all that stuff. So vegans, they don't do any kind of animal product. So they're right. not exposing themselves to any kind of chemical, hormone-based anything. Paula, that's, so- they are, they're lying to themselves if they think that's true. It's, it's absolutely a lie because all of this fake meat that they're eating is all manufactured. Well, what if they're not eating the fake meat? I mean, what if they tr- like Nate Diaz? He's a ve- he's a vegan. He's been a vegan forever. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he probably has just a, a very specific diet that he follows. I'm sure he doesn't eat fake meat. You know, I mean, that's but see, but, that, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who do do that. Like, oh, OK, there was a line out the door for this KFC stuff. And they sold out. And I'm like, what vegans are running to eat fake food? It's all fake. None of it's legitimate. None of it's clean. None of it is organic. It is full on Oreos that just happen to taste like chicken. Well, I don't think those people are really vegan. I think they're just going through a phase. Well, that's what I'm talking about. then, Then root your shit out because it's so bad for you. And it's so bad for the earth. So bad. I think everybody goes through a vegetarian phase in their life at some point. I don't know why I'm so offended by the by this vegan food. (laughs) Like I'm trying to figure it out. It's like, why am I so offended by it? I don't get it. Because people the intent is to be healthy. Mm -hmm. But obviously these things aren't healthy. So people who are subscribing to it saying like, oh, it's a healthy option. It's just like, there's nothing healthy about this. I don't even think they're saying it's a healthy option. I think they're saying at least no animals were harmed while I inhale this garbage. Right. You know, I think that is the problem that I have with it because it's like, so are you, I mean, somebody, I, this was a long time ago and we'll actually segue into this. Someone was saying how they were a hardcore vegan and that they don't even, you know, they don't harm animals in any way whatsoever. And I'm like, so no hair products, no cosmetics. And his profile picture was him wearing a leather belt and Doc Martens. And I said, those are leather. That's leather. Mm -hmm. You're wearing a cow, assumably. And he went on and he went off on me. How dare you judge me? You don't know me at all. And I'm like, you are literally telling me I'm a cunt because I eat fucking hamburgers. You're wearing a cow, you asshole. He's like, this was this was from a long time ago. And I'm like, dude, if you're so hardcore about this, then change your goddamn profile picture because you're just leaving it open for assholes like me who would love. In fact, he probably did it on purpose is my guess. What, have that on there? Yes, yeah, so that he could say, this was from a long time ago before I was informed. And I'm like, okay, all right. I'm not interested in talking to you if you're not interested in having a dialogue. If you just want to call me a cunt, that's fine. Whatever. The reality is, is this shit is not healthy for the earth. It's not healthy for human consumption. And I don't understand why it's suddenly becoming a thing. It, it, I'm offended by it because it's like, if you want to be a vegan, as you said, there's a Nick Diaz example. The man is incredibly healthy and very strong. He obviously has tailored his diet accordingly. He mm-hmm. ain't eating it. There is no way that dude is is consuming Oreos on a daily basis. No. So anyway, I don't know why I'm so worked up about it, though. But even when I go to the store and I see the, you know, not meat burgers or not meat sausages, I get angry. <laughs> I get 
angry. It's so stupid. Now, I'm not I against guess- vegetarian stuff. I'm not against like the black bean burgers and stuff like that. Actually, very good stuff. I actually like it. I think it's just because most people who claim to be vegan are probably, it's not actually true. It's somewhat of a, it's somewhat of a lie. And it's it's such a small percentage of the, of the world that's in the, I mean, I should say in the U S I don't know what the percentage of vegans are in the United States, but it's pretty small is my guess. Well, and the other thing too is, is like, you know, people who do like a paleo diet or right. a, a keto diet yeah. or a long beach diet, they usually educate themselves. You know, they don't, don't claim to do that diet, but not have any clue what that diet is. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they usually educate themselves, do research and figure out how to do the diet. Well, anyone can just say, oh, I'm a vegan and just think like, oh, I don't use butter and milk and, you know, and <laughs> yeah. think that, you know, now they're a vegan. But yeah. there's probably a lot more to it than just those things. And so yeah. it's not really being a true vegan. I, and I'm with you. I, I do struggle with the person who refuses to eat meat out of principle, but will happily gobble down three sausages that aren't sausages. Right. I don't know why it bothers me. It feels like it's a technicality, but I, I'm not going to go protest or anything like that. It just it's one of those things where I judge so harshly and I just there's. It's just, you can't, there's no explanation for it. I'm sorry. Well, they even say like, you know, I've, I've seen, I don't know if it's commercials or like, uh, infomercials. Yeah. Like an infomercial or something. And they'll be like, you know, portobello mushroom can taste exactly like a burger. And I'm just like, but if you don't want that flavor because it's an animal, why would you want it to taste exactly like a burger? Isn't the whole point that you're rep- you're it's repellent to think that you're eating an animal? Then why would you want it to taste like Is, it? Isn't your desire to only eat vegetables? And- then then embrace the veg. Yeah, and yeah, so- I'm with you. I think that's what it is. It's like why why you, it's almost feel it almost feels hypocritical. Well, I think that's what it is. Is because they mm-hmm. they want a, a vegetable based diet. So if that's what you want, then you wouldn't want things that taste like meat. You wouldn't crave bacon, which everyone does almost. Mm-hmm. Almost. Anyway, speaking of people that that get mad, this is actually quite funny and it made me laugh. So Colby Covington is a UFC fighter who is, oh God. he goes out of his way to be as offensive as possible. And he and does, has, he just does it to stay relevant. He is. And so he's chosen to become a Trump supporter in, in the most obnoxious way fashion and so he wears the make america great hat he wears trump t-shirts he wears the ray-bans to make him look like you know the ultimate america kind of guy mm-hmm. and it's like he's a st- he's be- he's a stereotype he's acting like a cartoon a stereotype which i think is actually even worse because it's almost like he's making a mockery out well, of it's- trump supporters you know what i'm saying yes like that's because exactly if you it. Tr- if you truly do support Trump, is is that what is that how you want to tr- look? Is, is that what Trump supporters look like? If I was a Trump supporter, I'd be offended because well, right. I, I'd be like, "Are you saying that's what we look like? You we think look that's like, what it is? We look like douchebags." I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's like the the axe the the reek of axe from here. I can smell. Right? I mean, and and the way he talks, it's just like, right. is that what you say Trump supporters sound like? I mean, right. I would I would be offended because I'd be like, you're making a WWE act out of my right. political and Belief. and personal beliefs. Right. And so anyway, he's obnoxious and I have no respect for for that. I don't like caricatures of any. I don't like when anybody does it. I actually really had a hard time when Weidman started wearing the American flag into the ring. Like I really struggled with that for a long time. Oh, I hated it from the gate. I, I still am not a fan of it. And I don't I don't like it when anybody does it because I'm just like there are, there so are proper disre- ways to use right. the flag. You can look it up and it's only right. when it's on a pole or on a casket. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of that of that. But anyway, regard I backtrack. So this guy is now complaining publicly about how he's being treated in the UFC. He doesn't like the way Dana White's doing his deal. He's saying he's being disrespected, blah, blah, blah. So now he's talking, he's in some, in in some terms, he's saying, maybe I should just leave. So on Twitter, I was reading an article about it and I replied in a comment. I said, oh my God, please leave the UFC because I would love for him to go away. It would be great. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of that type of show. Anyway, because people are dumber than me, this guy replied and it made me literally LOL. Now he obviously doesn't know that I'm aware of the fact that this is a caricature. I get I get show. I get it. 
but I still would love it if he would go away. And so mm-hmm. the guy goes, oh, you're just, a, you're so stupid. You know, this is all an act, but you're just so dumb. You need to go back to school, Bubba Gump. I what? laugh so hard. I'm like, somebody called me Bubba Gump? What? What is that? I don't know. But I laughed. I absolutely fucking laugh. I laughed because I'm like, I have never been called Bubba Gump in my life. And I don't even know what that means. But Okay. One time, only at one time did somebody really get under my skin on Twitter. I had said something about a makeup that's going on. There was some kind of makeup trend. I go, oh God, that's like truly heinous. And a guy, mm-hmm. a guy responded because my profile pic is kind of a close up of my my eyes and my face. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, so apparently you're OK with spider eyelashes or something like that. He was offended. He was trying to be offensive about my mascara that was in this photo. And I really got angry why <laughs> because i do not have spider eyelashes because it's I, like that I give two shits what people say i don't either normally i laugh i do get i get a lot of dms about sex and all that garbage but occasionally i get people aff- trying to offend me on twitter and the, the but the bubba gump one was by far in a way the the most hilarious way to try to offend me that I had ever ever had that is funny because usually when I comment I always am commenting on UFC stuff and Mm -hmm. usually if people don't like what I'm saying it's usually guys and they will reply and say something like well you look like you haven't missed a meal and I know know, what well they immediately they immediately go they immediately tell me how fat I am and then they're just like oh you know when's the last time you hit a treadmill (laughs) <laughs> and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And I'm just like, okay, really? I'm like, I'm 5'4", and I weigh 135 pounds. It's like, can you try a little harder, please? I mean, if you're going to roast, come on. And I said, and let's be honest, your profile picture is of Mickey Mouse. So yeah, we all you know, know that you're fused to couch somewhere. I highly doubt. And I said, and then, and last, I said, I don't see you out on the main post insulting any of the other fatties out there. Yeah. I said, I wonder why. You just choose to attack the girl that has the opinion. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like God. I'm like I'm all. That's like so old. I'm like if you if you have something real to say, then say it. But if you don't, then you know go eat a dick. I can see the compelling need to engage online. Um, it's fun. It, it can be fun, especially when you know you're smarter than a lot of the people that that are right. in that element. You know, you're like, oh my God, I so. I have to watch it because it, all it really does is put me in a bad mood or make me feel or I'm really aggressive and I'm and I turn into some kind of asshole for the day. So I actually really disengage. So it was really surprising that somebody responded because essentially I had a lot of people like my comment. Mm-hmm. And then the one dissenter who calls me Bubba Gump and to go back to school. And I'm like, I don't really know what any of that means, but I feel like you've had that in the holster for quite a while and you've been dying to use it. So mm-hmm. uh, congratulations. I hope you sleep well. And uh, moving on. I would have said, I'm, I'm sorry my shrimp-like appearance bothered you. <laughs> but I don't get it. Or do you not like full lips? Like, what are we saying here? Like, I don't really get it, you know? I don't, I don't know what it is, but I'm like, you know, whatever. You know, shit happens or something like that. You know, any any quote from Forrest Gump would have done. What I yeah. hate. You should have said it was, well, life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> no you never shit. know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Anything. Something. In fact, I was listening. It was really interesting. I was listening to Joe Rogan a couple of days ago and he had Bill Burr on. And mm-hmm. they were talking about the fact that Bill, he has a almost three-year-old daughter and he wants her in uh, some kind of self-defense and he wants to start her little. And Joe was saying, oh, yeah, I started my kids. I, he has two daughters that are three. But the two daughters he started when they were like four in self-defense mm-hmm. classes, jujitsu, Muay Thai, karate. Mm-hmm. And he said now they're 14 and 16, I think. And he lets them hit hit hit, hit him as hard as they want. And he's like, why? He goes, yeah. And it hurts, by the way, because they've been training for 10 years now. Wow. And he goes, I do it so they know what it feels like to hit a very strong man because mm-hmm. he wants them to, he goes, it's a foreign concept to grapple with another human being. It feels weird. If you've never had to do it, you wouldn't really know what to do. And so for him, he thinks it's important that his daughters know what it feels like to feel the strength of another human being because it is not a foreign concept. That way they don't know what to do with themselves if someone were to be dumb enough to try to grab them. Well, you know, I mean, that's a good point because, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you always think 
things a certain way, but just yeah. like, you know, like last episode when I talked about the gun range, yeah. it was completely different than what right. I had, what I had anticipated. Nothing. Exactly. You always think that, you know, oh, if I got attacked, I'd totally kick someone's ass. Well, you maybe that. you wouldn't, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe you have no clue how it would go down. So. And I have to tell you, after I listened to that, I think we all need a little lesson in self-defense. Mm-hmm. Daryl and I were talking about it and I was telling him about this episode I was listening to. And I said, I, I have never been put into a position where I've had to defend myself physically, but I'm also, I'm, a, I'm also a pretty intimidating person. We all are. Yeah. And I told him, I said, is it because I'm a big girl? He goes, you're not a big girl. He goes, it's all in the face. You look like you would literally kill somebody, literally mm-hmm. kill someone. And I'm like, okay. I said, I want to back that up, though. I want to be able to back it up. I don't want, to, you know, and we fight dirty, too. Like, I have, well, I will not stop until I'm either dead or you're dead. But the thing yeah. is, and I've been in fights, and I always win. But mm-hmm. the problem is, is that I want, I want a little control over it. I want to be able to, to control that properly. Yeah, because we won't stop. Right. I want to be able to know that I've submitted or I've, you know, someone submitted and I can just move on with my life. Like, I don't want like there there's a stopping point. Right. Like I know that I I will not have to worry about this person getting up. But I thought, you know what? We should all take one. We should all do some some kind of class or take some kind of lessons and learn how to do that. Well, actually, that's one of the activities I have um, for Olivia on her Girl Scout program. It's, yeah. it's, it's a mini self-defense class. I and think so that's a great idea. I'm like, I think that's perfect for her because, I mean, she likes to be physical anyway. And yes. I'm like, might as well do something constructive with her energy. So. Agreed. And I think it would help us, too, because we have a lot of rage. But I, I don't want to it- do something stupid like they had in the 80s. Like, you know, <laughs> stop, 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 where you're stomping forward and, you know, have no like, your means, hands. No. No. Yeah, yeah I got you. And- no, I want to do a real one. I want to, I mean, look at if Demi Lovato can do jujitsu, I can do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm but only she her, dates, I can only she dates your mother. boyfriends that show her, so. I know. But anyway, so I think we should do some, some checking around and see if we can find something that we can all do. Because we know we're not coordinated, but I think that if we had a, a vision of what we were aiming for i think that we would really have some success and i would love to See, do it i'm just afraid we get kicked out of the class because we'd like get out of control <laughs> with it we wouldn't we wouldn't we would we would control ourselves like, okay everybody practice on the teacher and then i'd be like ah! <laughs> Start, like you know actually what would happen is you'd be like i wonder if he's single excuse me instructor <laughs> stop it i need some extra lessons yeah <laughs> i'd be like paula no come on i want to come back here not in my sausage shape right now. <laughs> God, I've just gotten so fat recently. I don't know what my... Well, okay. I just saw you. You don't look fat. Although, you know, Do you ate a dozen donuts, but whatever. Anyway. What? <laughs> you ate all those donuts. No, it's just like my midsection. All of a sudden, it's just like sausage-like. It's well, you know what? Here's the thing. We're both PMSing, and so we have no business talking about our bodies because i told i just said i why do i look like a fucking blob i don't i'm sick of it he goes you don't look like a blob i'm like i absolutely do i keep threatening to start running but i just don't you're not gonna go you're not running you know you're not well i mean i want to but it's just been so (laughs) hot and then i think about it i'm like well if i could start early but then i'm like then it's just not safe because like two right. women literally got i know like robbed at 5 30 in the morning and it was two dudes and they had a gun and i'm like that's not I even know. a fair fight over here it was over by here it pissed me off and i'm just I like know. that's that's uncool man like i because i'll usually have like a stick or something or whatever yeah but i'm just like you pull a gun on two ladies jogging in the morning i'm like yeah. that's that's messed up. I mean, you're going to have to run serpentine and hope they don't catch you. I'd be like, you know what? This is really uncool of you. I'm just letting it's you like, know really, that. And, what, and what, what kind of things do you think I have on exactly. me at 530 You know, morning? they're wearing spandex. I'm like, okay, here's my driver's license. What do you want? My phone? I mean, come right. on. I mean, come on. The 11's coming out. You know you don't want this. Come on. Right. Do me a favor. Finish my words with friends games. Yeah, so can you tell my mom? She just texted me. Can you tell her that I'm raped and dead now so that she can spend the rest of her life hunting you down? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. I'd be like, actually, don't finish my words with friends games because I bet you're pretty stupid and you probably make me lose. <laughs> yeah, really. Assholes. I hope exactly. they catch dicks. Seriously. Fucking dicks. That would make me mad. <sighs> I know. Okay. 
It's time to do our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Already? We're going to do, yes. Okay. And we're going to do Vegas edition. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> This one's funny. And I mean, these are just experiences and anything that happens in Vegas is awkward. Okay. I saw a homeless person jerking off underneath a blanket, accidentally made eye contact. Worst half second of my life. (laughs) Oh my God. I know. Right. I was just seeing, um, this was over the summer, late summer in Vegas where they were invaded by grasshoppers. Yeah. What was that all about? I don't know. I think that happens. It's kind of like a migration. I think it definitely does happen in the parts of the country where you just get this sudden influx of, of insects or birds or whatever. And uh, I've heard of that happening before. Wouldn't that suck, though, if you had, like, planned this big vacation to Vegas during that time? <laughs> Can you imagine if you were getting married out there? Can you <laughs> yeah, even you imagine? You couldn't take any outdoor pictures or anything. You couldn't or... do anything. Oh, well, first of all, Paul, I mean, I would never leave. I'd be like, um, no, I, I will absolutely, I refuse to go outside. You couldn't even enter the, the strip. I mean. I had a friend who was there for a conference, and she was like, you can't literally can't walk without stepping on dead grasshoppers why did you go out i can't even think I wouldn't of even anything talk. i'd be afraid someone would fly in my mouth and these aren't tiny man these are no, big ass grass they were huge locusts they were like, like freaking locusts. biblical yeah. they were bri- biblical i know I'm sorry. I, 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 i'd be afraid of all is the strip gonna turn into like you know blood or what i or, or, don't know the how frogs? people functioned <laughs> but never i would never do it never can you imagine being homeless I call Victor. Is Ryan still alive? Put (laughs) lamb's blood on the front door. Right? I would be like, I mean, so speaking of homeless, can you imagine being homeless out there with that happening? I mean, that would be, it'd be like, it's like a bad movie. It's a scary bad movie. Bear Grylls would be on the TV. They actually have some nutrition and no value. (laughs) They're full of vitamin C. They're a bit, they're a bit crunchy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Here's the second or the second one of the third I have. This one's funny. On my 21st birthday, I found out my grandpa enjoys lap dances just as much as I do. (laughs) Oh God. (laughs) That is horrifying. That is horrible. What are you doing in a strip club with your grandfather? I mean, really? Well, I mean, if it's a boy, then I'm sure all the boys in the family, you know, dad, brother, whoever. You're 21. We're going to Vegas. Everyone's going to the strip club. Yes. I I really hope that doesn't happen with my son. I don't know. You know, it's funny because Daryl is a very unusual man. He is not like your average guy. Now, he loves women. He loves beautiful women. I've on many occasions seen him staring at women. Uh, So I know that he definitely has the same ability, you know, the same thing. But he's been cured of a lot of things. When he Mm -hmm. first started selling radio back when he was like 21 years old, he got a client. Uh, called the Embers. And if you're from this oh, area, <laughs> you know exactly where, what that is. <laughs> that's where strippers go to die. <laughs> and that's what they say. They say that's where strippers go to die. And well, so, it's closed now. It doesn't exist. But. Oh, hell yes, it's closed. And so uh, he had to go and collect the check for the advertising <laughs> once a week because it was back in the WKRP days where everything was done casually. And so he goes, I would walk in at 10 o'clock in the morning and it was dark in there. And there was always someone on stage, but there'd be like two guys sitting in the club and it was a very small club. Uh And there'd be some sad woman, you know, barely gyrating on the stage in in underwear. And Mm -hmm. I would have to go into the back of the office and it was just like you would think. The guy was huge Mm -hmm. and sitting at a desk way too small piles of paper everywhere and i'd walk in and say hey i'm here for the check and he goes and i'm waiting and he's writing the check and a woman comes in and she's got two or three inch long electric blue fake nails Mm -hmm. she's wearing you know a bikini type getup walks in and hands him a glass of vodka that barely has any orange juice on it Oh, my God. And he's all, thank you, honey. And she walks out. He's like, I couldn't. He goes, I never wanted to go to another strip club again. Never. Because we had talked about it. I'm like, I would go if you wanted to. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't need to do it, but I would do it if you were curious. He's like, I have zero desire to go. So to he's never club. been to like an upscale one, like for Sacramento. Um, you know, 
he, maybe he has, and he's just never told me, but he's not, it's not something that he really has a desire to do. Um, so I'm like, all right. Cause you know, to me, it's like, just be honest with me, you know, don't, don't try to lie or hide about it. And, and we're good. You know, I just need to know what kind of man I'm dealing with. And he's been very honest and he's like, no, he's had options. He's definitely had mm-hmm. the option to go, but he generally has said no, that he doesn't have any desire to do it. He goes, I don't understand the men that eat there. Cause they, they <laughs> serve food and shit. He's yeah. Like, like I don't grilled get cheese sandwiches or yeah. like, you know, hot wings, n- but not I think, like real food. You know, he also, when he was, he was a DJ for a while and he had to DJ for the, uh, like the down under shows. He did a Chippendale show. He was at a bar where they had girl strippers on one side and men strippers on the other. Cool. And he had to be the DJ. So he's kind of like, I've seen what it's like not being in the audience and it's not pretty. And so I think, Personally, I think that's why he's not a big fan of that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so I don't. He's never had. I don't think he's ever had a lap dance, from what I can gather. So well, I mean, I've been a few times, mm-hmm. and I've been with uh, different like boyfriends or husbands or sure. combination of both. And you know, every time that we've been, and usually it was their first time, or they, or not their first time, but like maybe a first time going with like a spouse Mm -hmm. it's just like it just changes you know it's just kind of like yeah this this is just kind of lame you know it's 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 not sexy it's kind of seedy and yeah you know the people sitting around watching it's just they're gross and it's always kind of cold and mechanical in there and you know and then you you don't want to touch anything because it looks like it's covered in germs and I mean the girls are pretty but of course beautiful not pretty in the way like you would date them or something but just to be looked pretty like like maybe they you would see them yeah like in a Victoria's Secret magazine you know modeling bras but which is why people go there I mean that's what they want to they want to see that the epitome of the ultra feminine body which is why they're there yeah. I mean, I know a lot of guys do it for like, you know, someone's bachelor party. It's just right. kind of like a, a rite of like passage. A, yeah, like a no brainer kind of thing. You know, so when they're there, they're being all like dorky and primitive and all that kind of stuff. But I almost think it's like a show for them, like uh, like amongst <laughs> each other. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like they're being disgusting on purpose because they feel like that's what they have to do. Most of them are really not into it. See, I, and see, the problem is, is because I'm an overthinker. I have, I can't think about adult clubs like that and think it's okay. It's just really difficult. And I know that there are high level places in Vegas and stuff like Spearmint Rhino, where these women are literally practically famous, but most of them do end up in porn because that's where the money is, you know. And yeah, they're beautiful. I mean- they're gorgeous. But it's like I don't. I don't know. I, I I struggle, and they tour, and they go to different clubs, and well, it's just it's a different just a way. It, it's an industry, yeah. And so for sure. it's it's just a different type of industry that you know a, a majority of the population does not participate in. And they they really feel like they're the ones that are in control, and that the people who are paying them are the are the are the fools. Well, and if that's the case, then they probably mm-hmm. do have a healthy outlook on what they're yeah. doing. Yes. And and I have seen documentaries where women, they are married, they have children, they go home and they are wearing, you know, sweats and, you know, they take their kids to school and <laughs> right, right. make lunches and all of that stuff. And then, you know, the nights that they work, w- when they get there, they completely transform and become like an right. alternate persona. Exactly. But it, But they view it like, that's my job. I could never do it. No, I could uh, no. Okay, so here's the last one, and then we have to say goodbye. Okay. I went to a one cent machine. I won three hundred cents and went to Dairy Queen. <laughs> she won three hundred what? Cents. Oh God! The last time, or the first time, I went to Vegas with Stephanie and Allison. Yeah. We okay, so we stayed at the same hotel, and I don't know what we were waiting for. I think Allison had made the reservation, and there was something wrong. So I think she was at the front desk, and Stephanie and I bailed because we just can't handle it and so <laughs> yeah I went over to the, like this little nickel machine and I'd never gambled before so I just like pulled the the slot thing and I'm just like I don't even know what this thing does and then all of a sudden it was like <laughs> you know and like the little light went off and I'm just like oh my god oh my and god. so all these nickels came like you know coming out into like this oh. tray and I was just like ah 
And so um, I looked at the thing and it's just like, you just won $35. So I put my hands in the air. I'm like, Woo! and I started oh screaming. God. That's and so Stephanie's funny. like, what? How'd you do it? And so like a bunch of people started came, coming up and like looking to see what I won. I'm like, I just won $35. <laughs> so <laughs> drinks are on me. Now, looking back, having gambled, <laughs> when yeah. someone does that, they've usually won like several thousands of dollars. Right. So me making a big commotion about 35 is nothing. <laughs> I read when I was looking for uh, awkward moments for the Vegas edition, I had read, and this is obviously not awkward, somebody was waiting for a friend to uh, come down from the hotel room. And so mm-hmm. he put five bucks into a machine and he won 200 grand. Oh my gosh. I know. It must have been a $5 machine. Yes. Yeah, it was. And he came home with a new truck and an upgrade for his wife's wedding ring. That is insane. It's awesome. That is. Anyway. Wow. All right. Well, that's all I have. All right. Please go to uglytruth.com. Click on the Amazon button. Do some shopping. And then uh, go to lipandclip.com. Pick up some makeup. If you are doing Halloween makeup, they have really great eyeshadow palettes. They have a really good green one, which I actually did do first before I put on said costume. And then I was just like, well, this is not going to work. So I had green eyeshadow and whatever else I was wearing because I didn't want to take it off. But they have lots of blues, pinks, purples, all that kind of stuff. And excellent lipstick colors to choose from. Other than that, uh, have a fabulous rest of your week. Happy hump day, and we'll see you on Sunday. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.